Well, good morning. Let's just spend a few moments giving God some praise and glory. Let's go on and let's give Him everything we have today. Sing this with me. You know I see is a battle. You see my victory. Man, we could stop right there and worship would be over. That's good enough, isn't it? Come on, let's keep singing. I see is a mountain. You see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I ourselves. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can 
can stand against the power of let's exalt him almighty fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our god you shine in the shadows you win every battle nothing can stand against the power of our God. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, God. God, thank you for your strength. Thank you that you possess it all. You're strongest. You're stronger. Everything we need is found in you. We just exalt you, mighty God. Come on, church, let's exalt him today. Make him high. Let's lift him up. Sing worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath you could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. God, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like. There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me Sing this out, worthy
put my trust in you alone and I will not Come on, let's sing that one more time. I will I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken the words firm foundation just jumped off the page just jumped off that that song the firm foundation that God is dependable strong so church can we just spend just a couple minutes just a couple minutes exalting him singing maybe our own song or just giving him thanks let's just spend just a moment here worshiping the foundation of everything the foundation of it all our firm foundation let's just exalt him church just lift up your own words holy god praise you faithful faithful lover of my soul Come on, church, just give him praise. He's so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you. We exalt you, Lord. Lord, it's our prayer today that you would be so magnified in this place that everything else, everything else shrinks away, that you would be so magnified that we would gain the, pers the heavenly perspective. You are our firm foundation. And we love you. We worship you. We're here for you. Come on, church, let's sing, the, let's sing worthy. Let's just sing worthy of every song. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever bring We live for you Come on, let's exalt his name Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever bring We live for you God, we live for you We live for you Only
as we've been alive, God. Even before we met you, you knew us and you were with us. Even before we acknowledged you and your presence in our life, God, you were with us at the cradle. You were with us at the playground. You were with us in high school, in college, in our careers, in our families. You were with us at the graveside, Lord. You never leave us. 
so we can truly say, because we've known plenty of people that this is true, all our lives you've been faithful. There's not one second that you've missed. Not one second, praise God. Thank you. And we just give you your due. You're worthy. You're worthy, God. And so we love you. And we're so thankful to be in this house with you, with brothers and sisters who love you. And so we're asking, Lord, that you would move in a powerful way. Move in a powerful way here. Come on, let's sing that bridge one more time. Your goodness is running after. Your goodness is running. It's running after me. Just sing that. Just remind ourselves. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. While I play down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. Thank you. Come on, give him praise, church. Thank you. We love you. Have your way here, Lord. Amen. Well, listen, you can be seated. We've got a lot coming up. As you know, it's Communion Sunday. But we've got a special video we want you to see. Check out this video from one of our partners in South Africa. Hey, Community Christian, it's Dan Smither, and I'm coming to you straight from Key of Hope here in Durban, South Africa. We've just wrapped up our last weekend program, our Kids Club. We'll have 1,500 plus children and young people here on our brand new property this weekend. And even though you are 8,000, more than 8,000 miles away from us, geographically speaking, I want you to know that the way you support us, not only financially, but in prayer and just giving us that moral support, y'all are with us every single day, walking side by side with us as we rescue and disciple hundreds and even thousands of children every single week. So I just wanted to say a quick thank you to you, Community Christian, for helping us do what we do every single day. We love y'all and we're so thankful to have you by our side. I love getting these updates from around the world. We are uh, incorporating this as a part of our service, these ministry moments. And what they're intended to do is to show you the result of your generous giving, your commitment to the tithe, and your commitment to uh, the, the commandments that God has given us to taking the gospel to the outermost bounds of the earth, to seeing the kingdom of heaven expanded, not just in Sterling Heights, not just Michigan, but across the globe. So your commitment in that area has made things like this possible. Give it up for yourselves. Thank you so much for your generous giving in that capacity. This is just one of many ways that God has uh, given us to steward finance as well. Uh, and it's one of our international projects, but we do have many uh, domestic and other uh, capacities that we'll be sharing over the weeks and months to come. But at this time in our service, we're going to take a moment to honor the Lord with our giving. And so if you were prepared to give this morning, we have four ways that you can do that, uh, whether that's by text or phone. Uh, if you're prepared to give in person, maybe you brought a check or cash. We do have lock boxes at the back uh, doors, secure boxes. You can drop that in on your way out this morning. All of it is greatly appreciated. And we know that the Lord clearly is using it in a mighty and powerful way. Amen? Well, Community Christian Church, it is so good to be with you this morning. My name is Pastor Tyler. I'm our next generation uh, pastor. And let me just, if, hopefully I'm not the first, but if I am, welcome to church this morning. It is so good to have you. Whether you're joining us online, in person, there is no better place to be than in the house of God. And I love that the house of God has uh, expanded in its own unique way over the last couple of years. It's been good to see that. So this morning, we're continuing our 30 series. We have an amazing word and a time of uh, communion this morning from Pastor Tony. So why don't we pray and uh, let's get ready for this morning's word. Lord, we love you. And we, as a church body, we commit our hearts and our minds towards you this morning. 
Lord, I pray that you would uh, prepare our hearts uh, for what you've done through worship now and through this uh, message and communion time. Lord, would you make our hearts like fertile soil, ready to receive the seed of your word. Lord, I pray that you would bless the giving that is coming in, God, that you continue to multiply it and bless the nations of the world as a result. God, I pray a covering over my church friends and family here, that you would cover them with a blessing and a protection that only can come from you. God, we love you. We put the rest of this service into your hands. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want you guys to check out these video announcements. Hello, CCC. I'm Darlene Green, and I would like to share a few things for you to know today. Are you new to Community Christian Church? If so, we'd love to get to know and connect with you. The best way to do this is by filling out a connection card. It can be found on our website's homepage, cccsterling.org. If you're here in person, you can fill out a connection card at the Next Steps desk in our lobby. It is time to launch a new semester of life groups here at CCC, and we have lots of fun options for the whole family. There are play groups for kids, men's basketball, disc golf, young adult volleyball, and running and walking groups. We have groups for prayer and reading as well. To see all of the options and register for a group, visit our life group catalog on our website, cccsterling.org slash life groups. Water baptism is a public declaration of your faith in Jesus Christ. If you've never been baptized and you are ready to take that next exciting step in your faith, we will be hosting a water baptism service Sunday, May 15th as a part of our Sunday morning service. To be baptized, sign up today on our events page, cccsterling.org slash events. We're excited to celebrate this special occasion with you and the church family. As the school year is winding down, it's time for the CCC tradition of Honor the Grad Sunday. On Sunday, May 22nd, we will celebrate our high school graduates and their accomplishments, as well as pray over them as they step into their next season of life. We will also celebrate our children moving up from one area of the ministry to another with a special moment on the platform. Parents of seniors, if you would like to have your graduate participate in this service, please fill out the high school graduate form and submit photos of your graduate on our website no later than Sunday, May 15th. This will be a great Sunday to invite friends and family to participate in the celebrations of milestones. Mark your calendars for Honor the Grad on Sunday, May 22nd. On the first Wednesday of every month, we invite you to join us in person or online for one hour of prayer and worship in our main sanctuary. Prayer and praise is a special time at CCC where we seek the Lord together and minister to each other. This night is for the whole family with children's classes and youth ministry meeting together as well. It's happening this Wednesday, May 4th at 7 p.m. and we look forward to seeing you there. That's all the announcements for today. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online at cccsterling.org and on Facebook or Instagram using CCC Sterling. If you have any questions or need any kind of assistance, please visit our Next Steps desk in the lobby. Now let's get ready to welcome Pastor Tony as he presents the final installment in our 30 series. Good morning. Once again, we want to welcome you to Community Christian Church. So good to have you here this morning. Are you glad that you made it to church today? And those of you who are tuning in, are you happy to be with us? So good to be in the presence of God. I, I thoroughly enjoyed our worship time together because, you know, the scripture says that when we come together in his name, he's here. Not just your friends, not just your brothers and sisters in Christ, but the Lord himself comes and dwells among us. And I, for one, need that, 
and I'm very thankful for that. So thank you so much for being here today. Last month, we celebrated 30 years in ministry. And this time around, instead of one and done, we decided to stretch things out a little bit and to do a 30-year anniversary series event. And so for the past couple of weeks now, we've been reviewing our main core values, the same values that we've had for the last 30 years, the values that we have strategically uh, centered around or built around the word grace. And so I know you've been doing this for a while now. And just to get it fresh in your mind, let's do it one last time, okay? Stay with me. Now, don't get ahead of me. G, God deserves to be first. R, relationships matter. A, I said stay with me. Acts of service. C, compassion for others. And E, today's fifth and final. I asked you not to get ahead on this. But you're, you're real sharp. You're real sharp. I, I did that on purpose. So E, everything belongs to God. And how many of you know that's Bible proof? That's not just our idea. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 1, Paul said, The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world, and everyone in it. How many of you know that's everything? It all belongs to God. It's all his. And he shares the best that he has with us. Now, as we begin this morning, what I'd like to do is to show you a couple of different photos. I'm not going to comment on them right away. Uh, I want you to take a look at them for a few seconds, and then we'll talk about them afterwards, okay? Here they are. All right, how did those pictures make you feel? Not very good, right? Saddened? Uh, heartbroken? Maybe compassionate? Trust me, uh, when I look at images like that, I feel that exact same way. But you know, even beyond that, when, when I see those kinds of images and things, I and moved with an overwhelming sense of gratefulness. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that that's not me. That by the grace of God, I have a roof over my head. I have clothes to wear and food to eat. I, I enjoy the basic necessities of life. And even beyond that, I'm very grateful and thankful that I belong to a church a sincere group of caring people who not only see images like that and have their hearts broken, but are compelled to do something about it. Amen. Do you know that there are many, many people in our world today who look with disdain and contempt at hurting souls like you just saw? They see those images and they could care less. It doesn't move them. It, it doesn't do anything. For they, they're able to just look right past it without it finding anything emotional or moving in their hearts. Now, I'm going to ask you to uh, forgive me in advance. I'm going to apologize right up front, but I've got to get this out of my system. Uh, most of you probably know that a couple of weeks during our cold Michigan winters. Uh, my wife, Teresa, and I, we like to travel uh, south, where the climate's a little bit warmer. Uh, we like to visit Florida for a little while. We've been doing this for years and years. And when I'm in Florida, especially when it's freezing here, I savor every single moment we have. 
In fact, every single day I jump out of bed in the morning, I have a smile on my face, and I tell Teresa and everyone else who will listen to me, it's another day in paradise. And it really is. It doesn't matter if it's raining or cloudy, it doesn't matter. Florida, to me, is paradise. And one of the uh, activities that we really enjoy doing when we're in Florida, especially in Fort Lauderdale, is to take a, a walk along the ocean. Find that to be so peaceful and relaxing. And so every day we're in Florida, we usually uh, get up early in the morning and we spend the first hour of the day walking down A1A. It, it runs right along the ocean, right along the beach. And on that five or six mile hike, there will be a whole slew of people doing the exact same thing that we're doing. Some of them will be walking, some run, some ride their bikes, some rollerblades, some scooter. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of people walking down A1A. And people on A1A uh, are typically dressed like there's no tomorrow. Uh, they're dressed like it's the last day that they're going to experience on planet Earth. And I'm amazed at the designer outfits. Seriously, the expensive and costly running and jogging suits. Most everyone who's walking or moving along A1A, they have the top of the line footwear, Apple watches, Bluetooth AirPods, and extremely expensive and fashionable sunglasses. And most of the walkers, not all of them, but most of them are usually nursing a Starbucks product of some kind. Are you getting the picture here? Are you understanding? For a couple of weeks out of the year, the people that we rub shoulders with on A1A, they either have a ton of money or they make it look like they have money. They go all out. And along this same trail, this same couple of miles stretch that we visit every single day, as you're walking along, you will encounter multiple homeless people. People who are sleeping on the beach or sitting next to all of their worldly possessions all packaged into a rusty old shopping cart. Hair disheveled, torn and soiled clothing, holes in their shoes if they even have shoes. Just like all of the images you just saw. In fact, all of those pictures were taken in March of this year when we visited Florida for a few days. And what's so heartbreaking to me is that people act like they don't even exist. Like they're not even there. The residents are desensitized to that demoralizing environment and they don't even stop their lives. They don't skip a beat. And I'm dying on the inside, fighting off, having to struggle with even being there because of what I see. Just the sight of that desperation, especially in that kind of a wealthy setting, it messes me up on the inside. And just to be clear, not for a moment am I suggesting that you give money to every single homeless person holding up a sign begging for money. That's not what I'm saying at all. My point in telling you these things and rehearsing all of this and trying to get it out of my system is to remind you that God in his mercy has made provision for the poor and the destitute in our world. How many of you believe that? He cares about the poor. God has a heart for the orphan and the widow and the homeless. He has made a way for these people, the people that are hurting, the people that are struggling, uh, to be provided for. And oftentimes that provision comes via or by virtue of generosity. Can I get you to say that? Generosity. God has made provision 
for the, for the people in our world who are hurting, the people who are struggling, through this gift called generosity. He doesn't always open the windows of heaven and rain down bread. He doesn't always multiply fish. What God does is he uses the open blessings, the divine blessings that he gives to his people and he helps us to understand how powerful and how much merit generosity has. This is something that God does by his spirit. He does it by grace because we don't have the ability to do it on our own. But the provision that God makes for the poor in our land, the, the, the people that are hurting, is oftentimes through the people that he has blessed. Because that's what blessing is all about. Blessing that comes from the hand of God is to be shared with the people around us. And yes, God wants us to enjoy those blessings. He gives those blessings to us so that we can put a smile on our face and know that we serve a, a good God. But he also wants us to keep in mind those who are hurting. And friends, I have the Bible to back me up on this. This is not just my idea. As difficult as it is to hear sometimes and to be reminded of it, it's in the Word of God, often. In fact, throughout the Scripture, from cover to cover, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Listen to what Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse 7 says. If among you, one of your brothers or your sisters should become poor in any of your towns within your land that the Lord your God has given you, you shall not harden your heart or shut your hand against your poor brother. A few verses later in Deuteronomy 15, 11, God said, for there will never cease to be poor in the land. Therefore, I offer to you this suggestion, right? This command. Therefore, I command you, you shall open wide your hand to your brother, to the needy and to the poor in the land. Here God basically said, I wish there were some things that I could change about the world. I'd like to remove or eliminate the hungry and the hardship. I, I, I'd like to eliminate poverty and pain. Unfortunately, because we live in a sinful world, in a broken world, these things exist. God says, they're always going to be among us. But that's where we come in. God says, this is what I'm commanding, from you, uh, commanding you to do. This is what I expect from you, is that you would open your heart and be generous to the people around you, that you would be mindful of, of the poor. In other words, don't turn and walk away when it's in your power to do something beneficial for someone else. And then God said, when I see you, reaching out and expressing compassion to the people around you, when I see that this is something that's in your heart, not only am I going to take note of it and write it down so I don't forget it, God said, I promise you I'm going to respond favorably and I'm going to make it worth your while. God said there is reward. There is a blessing for when we consider the poor. When we show compassion to the people around us who are hurting when we go out of our way to extend a blessing to someone else, God says, not only will I remember that, but I'm going to reward you for it. Psalm 41.1, in case you think I'm not telling you the truth. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. Because in the day of trouble, the Lord will deliver him. Who's the Lord going to deliver? Not the poor but the person who considers the poor. God said, I will reach out and I will extend a blessing to you. I will rescue you. I will save you. I will deliver you when you're going through a test or a trial. I will be in your corner just because you kept the, for, the poor at the forefront of your mind. One more, my favorite of all the verses in the, in the Old Testament, Proverbs 19, 17. Whoever is kind to the poor, lends as unto the Lord. Who's ever kind to the poor, it's like you're lending to the Lord, and he, the Lord, will reward you for what you've done. Now, I've mentioned this to you on countless occasions. We don't serve the Lord. We don't obey the commandments of God and live for him 
just because of the reward he gives to us. We honor the Lord. We surrender our lives to him because of the horrific sacrifice Jesus made on the cross for us. He paid the price for our redemption. He did that for me. Say that. He did that for me. He did it for me. Jesus did that for me. He died that I might have life and have it more abundantly. So we don't serve the Lord just because he's passing out rewards. But it is a pretty attractive gift. It's some incentive. And so we don't honor the Lord. We don't serve him because he's rewarding us. But the scripture says God does acknowledge. He, he favors and he responds and he rewards every act of kindness. And again, in case you miss it the first time around, I'm not suggesting that we try to solve this all by ourselves on the streets. We haven't been called to make sure that there is no homeless people in our general area. However, I do believe that when we, as a church, come together and pool our resources, we can make a huge difference in the world. That's what the scripture teaches us. That together, doing our part, we can change the world. Amen. And that's precisely what we did a couple of months ago. Let me remind you, back in March, when Russia invaded Ukraine and in the process uh, caused tens of thousands of refugees, more, mostly women and children and elderly, to be homeless. Uh, they started to flee their homes and they were forced to look for food and shelter in neighboring Romania. The call went out for help. And Community Christian Church responded with overwhelming generosity. In just two weeks, we raised $60,000. And when we wired the money to our missionary partner in Romania, he was speechless. I talked to him on the phone countless times, and he told me, I have no words. I can't believe that your church in, in the United States would respond like this and give us so much money. And friends, I have to tell you from the bottom of my heart, I am so honored to be your pastor to be a part of a church community, a loving church community that shows so much compassion toward others, that, that contains so many different gifts and your willingness to get involved and be generous. And I could not be more pleased with the way we as a church have handled this fifth and final core value the E in grace, everything belongs to God. It's all his. And this whole matter of tithing and giving generously and being someone that has compassion in your heart, it originates out of this one truth that everything belongs to him. That every good and perfect gift we have comes from his hand. And believe it or not, tithing or giving 10% of your income is the only way the church of Jesus Christ is going to continue to advance and thrive. Tithing honors God's divine plan of provision. And it's the vehicle that God uses to meet the various needs of the poor. And even beyond that, I continue to passionately preach the tithe because I know that when you're faithful to honor God with your finances, not only will God increase your personal financial portfolio, but tithing will also help to create a brand new level of gratefulness in our hearts. Tithing does that. Tithing helps to stretch and to increase our sense of appreciation for all that we have, to be thankful for what we have. And that's important in the eyes of God because the scripture says over and over again that we're to be thankful in all things to give thanks in every situation to God. And it's giving and being a, a generous and, and being a people that are mindful of others that helps to build this sense of gratefulness. Now in her brand new book, uh, The Power of Thank You, 
New York Times best-selling author and Bible teacher, Joyce Meyer, she tells a story, a touching story of a little blind boy. And each and every day, this little blind boy would sit on the steps of an office building, begging. He had a little hat that he would use to collect the money, and right near the hat, he would hold up a sign, and the sign was handwritten. It said, please help me, I'm blind. Did that every day. Sat there all day long. Well, early one morning, a man walked by, and he was surprised to see just a few coins in that hat. Just a little spare change that people had thrown in to the little boy's hat as they were making their way into the office building. And so he took the sign out of the boy's hand, turned it around, and wrote a different message on the sign. And he handed it back to the boy. A couple of hours later, he came back, and this time, the hat was full of money. Now I'm talking about dollar bills of all denominations. And as he was walking up to the little boy, the boy must have recognized his footsteps because he said to the man, are you the one who took the sign out of my hand earlier today? And the man said, yeah, that was me. I hope you don't mind. But what I did is I rewrote your sign. I, I expressed pretty much the same message, but I said it in different words. And the little boy asked him, well, what did you write? He said, I wrote, today is a beautiful day. Unfortunately, I'm not able to see it. You see, both signs told the truth. The messages were a little bit different, but they communicated the same thing, that the little bo the boy was poor and that he was blind. But the revised sign, the one that the man had written, it reminded the people how, how important it was to be grateful that they had the gift of sight. And because of the, that sense of gratefulness, because they were thankful and were reminded of that, they were able to give. And that's what the scripture teaches us. The scripture teaches that gratefulness breeds generosity. And when we can be grateful for what we have, when we can acknowledge that God has been good to us and focus in on our blessings as opposed to what we don't have, it helps us to give a little more. And again, that's one of the benefits of tithing. It increases, it multiplies, it stretches our sense of appreciation. We get an understanding that God has been good to us. Now, back in 2017, so what? Five years ago, Richard Stearns, the former president of World Hunger, he made a statement. He, he sent it out in miscellaneous posts and letters. And Richard Stearns, at that time, he said that if every Christian were to up their tithe by 2%, that he was convinced, he was confident that the Church of Jesus Christ could wipe out world hunger. Not the poverty in the world, but the hunger in the world. 2%. When he said that, he wanted it to be clear that he wasn't asking the church to raise the tithe level from 10% to 12%. He was just reminding us of our import, uh, how important it was for us to understand our responsibility to the poor. You see, right now, the national average uh, nationwide for tithing is about 2.5%. That, that's where most churches come in at. Thankfully, we're a little bit better than that, but not anywhere close to 10%. The average believer tithes about 2.5%. And so this lesson of everything belonging to God and the importance of giving and being generous, that's in the Word of God over and over again. And you'll find uh, this whole idea of gratefulness breeding generosity, you'll find that throughout the Scripture in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. People think it's just in the Old Testament, but it's not. It's everywhere in the Scripture. Listen to what Paul wrote in the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Paul said, For God, who is at work in the ministry of Peter, as an apostle to the Jews, 
was also at work in my ministry as the apostle to the Gentiles. In fact, James, Peter, and John, those regarded or reputed to be pillars, gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace or the preaching gift that God had given to me. They agreed that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the Jews. And here it is now, verse 10. This is the verse I want you to hear. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 10 in the New Testament. All they asked was that we should continue to remember the poor, the very thing I was eager to do. One more time. All they ask is that we should continue to remember the poor. Right, you know this. Before Saul of Tarsus became Paul the Apostle, he was knocked off his high horse by the Lord himself on his way to Damascus. And the scripture tells us that he was in a position, his, his desire, his motivation was to wipe out Christianity from the face of the earth. He was committed to destroying Christianity. And so when he was on the road to Damascus, he was armed with arrest warrants with an authority from the Sanhedrin to put in jail, beat, and even kill anyone who called themselves a Christ follower. I mean, Paul was out for blood, and he was determined. Read about his life. He was a very zealous person. But then, in Acts chapter 9, we're told that Paul was met by Jesus, and he was converted. The Lord appeared to him. And the conversion was so outstanding, he was radically saved in such a powerful way, and there was such a tremendous call of God on his life that immediately Paul started to preach Christ crucified and raised from the dead. With as much zeal as he wanted to destroy the church, he's now building the church. And when the, Peter and the boys heard about that, they called for an emergency board of directors meeting, and they invited Paul to come to the meeting. And as soon as they started talking with him, they asked him some questions, and, they, and, they, and they, as he was answering, immediately they discerned that his conversion was legitimate. It was genuine. And he was empowered by God. He was anointed by God to preach the gospel message. So they sent him on his way, and they said, we want you to go to the Gentiles. We'll hang out and preach to the Jews. You go to the unbelievers, and you teach them the gospel message. And the scripture says they gave him one assignment. That was it, one assignment. They didn't go over the list of the Beatitudes, didn't review with Paul the Sermon on the Mount, didn't talk about the Mount of Transfiguration and how they saw Jesus glorified. They didn't remind Paul that they were the original disciples and had the authority over him because Jesus had passed that assignment to them didn't talk about the foot washing session that Paul missed where they all were able to get their feet washed, didn't even talk to Paul about the love one another as I have loved you commandment. Peter, James, and John, the pillars of the Christian faith, the spiritual giants at the time, they passed along one mandate to Paul. Do you remember what it was? We just read it. Three words. Remember the poor. Peter said, Paul, when you're preaching, when you're talking about all of the things in Christianity that are extremely important for people to hear, you talk about salvation and redemption, talk about eternal life and repentance of sin. When you're, when you're preaching, when, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you and you're communicating and articulating to the people around you all of the things that are, that are important and they need to hear, don't forget to tell them about the poor. Don't forget to tell people how important it is to God that you count your blessings and you realize how good that God's been to you. And you build up this thing called gratitude and, 
and gratefulness and thanksgiving in your heart and you focus in on all of the things that God has blessed you and you take the time to consider all the gifts that God has given to you. And then when the appeal goes out for giving, to give generously. And Paul responded to Peter and said, hey, when it comes to that message, I'm all in. Because that's the very thing that Jesus already put in my heart. And Paul went through the land and he raised more money for the poor people in Jerusalem and all through the region than anyone else. He established his churches on this whole idea of giving, this generosity teaching. And he just continued to raise the money. And friend, when I consider our core values and what the Lord has taught us here at our church, we cannot eliminate this last point. Everything we have is his. The scripture says every good and perfect gift we have has come from his hand. He has blessed us in such a tremendous way. And so we will gladly stand before him with gratitude in our hearts and remember the people around us that don't have very much. Amen. Let's bow our heads and prepare for communion. Father, we thank you as we prepare our hearts to celebrate this communion service. We're reminded, Lord, of how much you gave for us. You gave us the very best that you have to give your own son. Scripture tells us that God so loved the world, the whole world, not just a few people, not just a select group. He loved the whole world. He gave his one and only son. And Lord, we just celebrated a couple weeks ago everything that Jesus did for us on that cross. And Lord, we are grateful. We stand before you as a grateful people. And it's in our hearts, Lord, to say thank you. I pray in these closing moments that we would be able to focus our attention on how good you've been to us. All the provision that you've made available to us and not what we lack. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you for a group of people that have learned the secret this grace that everything belongs to you and in turn we can be generous with the people around us. Father, we pray that you would move in these closing moments. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. As I punch this clock The hours roll, they never stop And I can never seem to get ahead Always trying to do what's right Straight and narrows getting tight Don't know how much longer I can stand And I'm wondering Yeah, I'm wondering Where's my promised land? Satisfied, but I don't call Something a lot of blame that never lives Even though the questions change The answers always stay the same Maybe someday I will understand So I'm wondering I've been wondering Where's my promised land? Oh
this race Broken but I still have faith That this whole life is all part of a plan And I can feel it in my soul One day I'll stand before the throne With nothing left but hope in these two hands Through all these seasons I asked for that song this morning. I know it's not typically the kind of song that we would do during a communion service, but I wanted you to see the words to that song. And I wanted to link the message of that song with this particular message that I gave to you this morning. Because sometimes we're tempted to think that the promises of God are not yes and amen. See, the devil likes to whisper to us and tell us that God's not going to come through for us, that God is not faithful to his word. I'm going to tell you, like I did this morning, on the authority of God's word, that if you give faithfully, if you give it God's prompting, if you show generosity to the people around you, if you honor God with your finances and with the tithe, he's going to open the windows of heaven and he's going to pour out blessing on you. He's going to reward you. He's going to fight your battles. He's going to rescue you. He's going to provide all of your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you that because that's what the Bible says. That's where I get my information and my intel from the Bible. I'm also very aware that it doesn't always happen that way. And you may think, you know, I give. I do my best to be helpful and compassionate and kind. I tithe on most every dollar I get. Where's my promised land, God? People stand up and they give testimony of the goodness of God. They share how they're recipients of God's favor. They've gotten promotions. They've gotten raises. They've gotten gifts. They win lottos. Where's my promised land, God? When is something good going to happen for me? You know, it was that exact mentality and mindset that drove or caused Toby Mac to write this song because he wanted to remind us that the promises of God are yes and amen, always, even when we don't experience them. And friend, that's not a cop-out, because I'll challenge you to go into your Bible and to read through the scriptures. Go to the book of Hebrews and check out Hebrews chapter 11, where it talks about Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Rebekah and Rahab and Joseph and Moses and David and on and on and on. You know what it says about all of those Bible heroes? They all died in faith, what? Never receiving the promise of God. And there's a reason for that. You see, sometimes we equate promises and blessings with stuff. That's what happens when we live in an affluent world like we do when we get this sense of entitlement that God owes us. 
And we don't give much thought to the people lying on the sand at night, the people that are sitting up next to a shopping cart day after day after day. No shower, no food. All we can think about is, where's mine, God? See, we, we've mistakenly equated blessing with things. Toby Mac took us back to the bottom line. It's not a thing. It's a person. His name is Jesus. And Jesus is our promised land. And Jesus has been given to every single one of us. No one is exempt from receiving him as our Lord and Savior. And that's what communion is all about. It's about him. The scripture says it was on the night that he was betrayed. The night that one of his close friends, a hand-picked disciple, a brother, stabbed him in the back. That he took bread and he gave thanks. And after blessing the meal, he passed the bread to his disciples and said, this is my body which is for you. You know, most of the time, in the scripture, bread represents provision. And I'm not going to link a lack of provision on your part to anything that you've done wrong. All I can tell you, I can tell you this from experience, is when provision's not there, sometimes God is stretching you. Doesn't mean you disobeyed his word doesn't mean that you're outside of his will or you did something you're not supposed to do it just means he's asking those faith roots to go down a little deeper and sometimes the only thing that can do that is a test or a trial you can say God I want more faith you can say God I want to trust you more and sometimes the only way that's going to happen in an answer to your prayer is a test or a trial and so I will communicate to you on the authority of God's word. He's a promise keeper and he will provide for you. So Father, I pray for those who are here, those who are listening, watching. If there's a need, Lord, if there's a financial need, I pray, Lord God, that in your own dealing with each, each one of us, as you call us to that deep place in you as you call us to have more faith and more trust in you. I pray, Lord, you would provide in supernatural ways. Your word says you open the scriptures, you open the windows of heaven, you open revelation to us so that we can receive from you. It's not always a thing. It's not always stuff. It's a truth. It's a gift. It's a little bit more knowledge of you. I pray that provision, Lord. I pray that you would provide for this group of people in supernatural ways. Let's take the bread together. After supper it ended, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks. He passed the cup to his disciples. He said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you declare the Lord's death till he comes. It was Isaiah who talked about his death. 700 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah, in Isaiah 53 said, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was placed upon him and by his wounds, by the blood that he shed, we are healed. You hold in your hand this morning a covenant cup. You can be in covenant relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. And if you don't know him as your Savior and Lord, if you've never bowed your knee at the cross or repented of your sins and confessed his Lordship, this would be a really good day for you to do that. In fact, what better day to be saved than on a day we talk about money? What a grace there is in that. 
But for those of you who have any kind of a need, it's all made available in this covenant cup. Those of you who know the Lord, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's financial promotion, there's relational reconciliation, there's forgiveness, all in this cup. And so, Lord, we thank you for the covenant relationship that we have with you. We thank you for what this cup means to us. Jesus said, I provided this cup with my own blood. I gave my all. And you did that for us. You did that for me. And as a part of covenant, the definition is everything that you are, God, everything that you have, and you have it all, it belongs to me. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you for sharing the very best that you have with us. I pray, Lord, for healing. I pray that you would extend a healing touch to those who are in need. Lord, this is not a difficult thing for you. You only have to say the word. For those who are struggling, for those who have physical ailments, Lord, those who are lonely, afraid, discouraged, depressed, disappointed, disillusioned, for those, Lord, who are looking for a job, looking for a mate, looking for a purpose, it's all contained in this cup. And we thank you because it's an everlasting covenant, the promise that you made to us, Lord, and we receive it. Let's take the cup together.
again so I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Appreciate having you. As you heard from Darlene in the video a little earlier, if you have any needs at all, we'd like to help you with those needs. We have people here at the altar after every service to pray with you if you'd like a little additional prayer. If you want to tell us about a need that you have, you can stop by at the Next Steps desk. We just want to serve you. We want to help you. Yeah, we want to point you to God and and increase your relationship with him but we also want you to know that we're here for you as well god bless you as you go today begin to enjoy the spring weather it's coming i promise you it's coming god bless you have a good day